So today we're taking a look at the newest mini PC in the Boss Game Effie Zen series. We've taken a look at the P1 and the P3 before. This is now the P5. Keep in mind though that the P3 is actually more powerful than the P5, but the P5 is a very interesting system just because of the price to performance that you're going to get out of this hardware. And if we start to get this box open here, we can take a look at what the system actually looks like. And this is a departure from the current design that Boss Game has been using for their mini PCs. Both the P1 and the P3 have a very similar design philosophy, but this specific model actually takes a pretty drastically different direction in terms of the design. If we take a look at the system right here and just unpack it real quick, already I can notice a very, very drastic difference in build quality. It is the best built system that I have seen from Boss Game. And from the box here, we can tell that it's actually made by AZW, the manufacturer that also makes the B-Link mini PCs as well as Trig Key. And it makes sense when you take a look at the system because while it is a new unique design that I personally really love, there are the usual AZW design philosophy decisions here, including the big red power button in the front as well as the two front USB that has pretty much become standard for mini PCs across the board. Interestingly enough though, it lacks the front USB-C port that has been pretty standard in most mini PCs. But this actually is not a bad move because what they actually did was they moved the USB-C port to the back as well as giving you a second back USB-C port. So you get two USB-C ports and in all honesty they're in a position that makes them far more usable in the real world. Because while it might seem convenient to have the USB USB-C port in the front, what actually ends up happening is most of the time you're going to use that port with a dock. And now you have the cable for the dock coming out from the front, and it really just makes your whole setup look really nasty. This, you pretty much get two of them, so you can do whatever you want. You can even start to stack this thing along with whatever docks you want to use, and it keeps your whole setup clean. Pretty big fan of that. And already I can tell that on the bottom they are using a redesigned cooling system, but they still have some typical design decisions here so it's going to be very easy to get in here and we're going to take a look at that in a second because this configuration is very interesting to me. See it's a Ryzen 5 6600H and this is what I consider right now to be the lowest end that you should be looking for in terms of a gaming mini PC. I know it's going to seem tempting when you see mini PCs that have the Ryzen 7 5800H or the Ryzen 7 5700U because you're going to see them at some pretty great prices but the problem is is that the IGPUs on those are just not as comparable as the IGPU in here. This is going to give you noticeably better gaming performance and this is the cheapest you can go while still getting good performance and you're still getting driver updates from AMD because unfortunately those Vega based IGPUs are no longer supported. But let's try to pop this thing open right now and see what we're working with. Oh and just in case if you're wondering it does come with a 120 watt power adapter so this this is a pretty chunky power adapt. So I'm also going to be curious to see what the stock TDP of this system actually is. But first of all, let's open this thing up. It should be pretty easy to get in. There is a pull tab there, but clearly there is a fan right here, which means that there is more than likely going to be some cable that we might have to worry about. So when we open this, we're obviously going to have to be very gentle. All right, so if I just use pull tab here, which also feels disturbingly skinny, like it might just rip off. I don't know why this one's actually way thinner than the other ones that I've seen on AZW systems. That's really odd. All right, I'll pull on it. And yeah, there you can see there is the cable, but we can also see the inside of the system. Okay, that's interesting. So I wasn't expecting to see this. They uh, they used 12 gigabyte DIMMs in here. I don't know if you could see that there, but uh, it, it is 12 gigabytes. 12 gigabytes, 5600. Don't think that this is gonna run it at 5600. Since it's a 6600H, it's more than likely going to run this at only 4800 megahertz, but we'll have to see in the BIOS. But underneath here, you can see this is the first M.2 slot used, and here there actually seems to be a second one, but it, it is a shorter design. Not 100% sure why they did that, but that is a thing that they did. They also, of course, do have a big cooling system for the SSD here, which is interesting. I was very curious on how they were getting that 
that 24 gigabyte configuration. I was a little skeptical thinking that they might be putting a 16 gigabyte stick with 8 gigabyte stick and getting us this weird configuration, but instead I'm more surprised. We actually do have full dual channel memory for all 24 gigabytes and that's actually really exciting because if this can get to a competitive price point because while 32 gigabytes is nice if this has any kind of price saving for a gaming system this is really all you need because apus essentially work by dynamically adjusting the amount of ram that they have the way that they report to the system at any given moment is essentially the lowest amount that they support usually unless you allocate more to them but the problem is is that if you have 16 gigabytes of ram and you're allocating four gigabytes to the igpu that means that you're left with effectively around 11 gigabytes of system ram that gets eaten up very quickly by windows while in a scenario like this with 24 gigabytes you can allocate 4 gigabytes to the iGPU and you still have 20 gigabytes dedicated to your system because this is 24 gigabytes of dual channel memory you're going to get that full performance of dual channel while also avoiding a lot of the issues that come with most Ryzen 5 systems which end up only having 16 gigabytes or charging excessive amounts for a full 32 gigabytes so let's get this system hooked up and actually see how it performs. So first and foremost, we're taking a look at Black Myth Wukong here running with the lowest in-game graphics settings and we are using FSR 3.0 with frame generation on. And while the performance here isn't incredible, it is pretty decent. And you're also here able to see what kind of TDP we're running at here. At least throughout this specific title, we ended up being somewhere between 35 to 40 watts. It really just depended. A lot of it is going to come down to the fact that the the GPU itself is already at maximum load and it's at its maximum clock speeds, while the CPU itself isn't really doing a whole lot. See, the 6600H is such a cut down CPU, or rather it has a very cut down GPU, that also has such a low clock speed that it actually doesn't need all that much power when it's running. So because of that, even if we were to give this system a TDP all the way up to 55 watts, it's not going to get anywhere near that because it doesn't need that much wattage and I mean as a consequence of that the performance here isn't exactly remarkable though it is better than any Vega system that we've taken a look at but it clearly shows that modern AAA titles aren't exactly the best pair for a system like this which I guess no one should really be all that surprised where it really seems to work well is in older AAA titles and even some more modern ones that you really wouldn't expect to run all that well like Far Cry 6 here actually runs really well at the lowest in game graphic settings and we are using FSR but it is FSR at the ultra quality preset. So in general, at this level of performance, considering it's a single player game, I don't think it's all that bad. Where this chip is really going to shine is going to be in esports titles, specifically because of the fact that this system actually runs CS2 pretty well. Something that Vega based mini PCs like systems with the 5800H or the 5700U just cannot do. They really struggle with this title. It really seems like CS2 might need some kind of driver optimization in Vega or something like that and we're never gonna get it so effectively there's a pretty major gap between the performance of Counter-Strike 2 on Vega based iGPUs versus RDNA based ones because even a really cut down RDNA iGPU like this is doing a great job in comparison to even the best Vega iGPUs and what this extra performance really translates to is letting you actually play around with your graphic settings as opposed to always just being relegated to the absolute lowest settings. For example here Rainbow Six Siege is running with the lowest in-game graphics settings but instead of using FSR at the performance preset which is what I usually have to do on Vega iGPUs I'm able to set it to balanced and still get a high refresh rate experience. And if you're willing to sacrifice some more performance you can actually adjust your graphics settings so you don't have to play at the ugliest settings possible. 
But the 6600H actually does end up being a great performer in a wide variety of different titles as long as you're willing to be pretty conservative in terms of your graphic settings. While playing at medium in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord ends up being a sub 30 FPS disaster on this chip, playing at the low graphics settings actually ends up being a remarkably good time. I really wish that this chip would one let you overclock the memory because the clock speed being only at 4800 megahertz on that memory really limits the potential here and also the fact that the GPU is only clocked at 1900 megahertz instead of at least 2100 or 2200. If they were going to cut down the amount of cores this much they shouldn't have brought down the clock speed that much but unfortunately that's just the situation that we're in here. Of course in terms of CPU performance we are getting some nice results here. There was an update to Windows that came out pretty recently that ended up boosting the performance of all Ryzen chips by a significant margin, pretty much a generational uplift. So the 6600H in here is performing better than it ever has in its lifetime. And considering its six cores based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture, it's still going to be a great performer in today's day and age. Things like day-to-day -day web usage and even in gaming. The iGPU is going to be a limiting factor far before this CPU ends up being a problem in pretty much any game, while also still providing you with more than enough cores that you can pretty much do whatever you want on here without really worrying about anything getting overloaded, which is kind of a problem when you're using a system that has an Alder Lake N series processor like the N100 or N200. But the overall performance here on Cinebench makes it a great deal at its price point. It's pretty much the best balance balance in terms of CPU to GPU performance, though if CPU performance does matter to you a lot, more so than the GPU, then systems with the 5800H are also going to be pretty tempting because of the fact that, again, that update to Windows that boosted the performance does also apply for that. So the performance uplift is actually pretty rock solid there as well. And the 5800H, because it's an 8 core based off of Zen 3, it's going to perform better than the 6 cores of Zen 3 Plus here. And of course, here you could take a look at the pass mark score. Personally, I'm not the biggest pass mark fan but I have been asked enough about Passmark that here I can show you the results so you can take a look at that if it matters to you. So after taking a look at the system running quite a few games I'm actually really impressed with it. So far it is the best design system that I have seen from Boss Game and I'm really really excited for the direction that they're going. Just in terms of the overall design I'm a fan of it. It looks very distinct. It looks very unique. It seems to be stepping away from the usual design that we do see from AZW. Not the biggest fan of the top just because of the, that it does cover up quite a bit of the ventilation here just with this design. But there is still plenty of ventilation all across the body itself. So this really isn't as damaging as it would be on other systems that we've taken a look at. There was really a lot of thought that went into this. And I think that this is really showing that AZW as a manufacturer is just really understanding what it means to make a mini PC. And Boss Game here is really taking advantage of that, especially with the dual USB-Cs in the back. I'm a big fan of that. I am so glad that they didn't go with the front USB-C. This makes setups so much cleaner. It makes all of this so much more usable. And in general, the performance is really impressive. Just so you could understand how big of a leap this bug fix from Microsoft actually was, the 6600H in here was scoring on Cinebench pretty much exactly the same as what a 680U was scoring on there about seven months ago. Now of course that 680U is TDP limited so it's not giving the full performance that those cores could give but still it had a noticeable lead over the 6600H until this new update came out and this closed the gap entirely and that really is interesting to think that this system essentially ended up getting
getting a free generational upgrade in terms of CPU performance. And at the price point that this is at, this is now extremely competitive in comparison to what is on the market right now. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking a look at this system going up against a 5800H system on a few games just so that we can really see what the difference is like. So stay tuned for that. But if you're interested in picking up this system, check it out down below. I am a huge fan of this. This is so far my favorite 6600H system that I've taken a look at. The build quality of this is just so much nicer than most other systems that I've taken a look at. It's insane. It's definitely still plastic, but it is much higher quality plastic. It's far better put together than most other systems are. And if this is the direction that Boss Game is going with their systems, this is a company to keep your eyes on because they're probably going to be coming out with some great systems in the next year. But I'll catch you guys in the next one.